gardening is such an exciting challenge. There are so many techniques to master to improve output and efficiency. While I do heaps of propagation here to grow plants from scratch, I'm going to show you a grafting technique that will help you get more produce quicker. Grafting is basically joining two plants together. It's about making the most of hardy and strong root systems that are more suited to your local area by attaching one fruiting variety on top of a suitable rootstock plant. It's a standard technique used for many fruiting and ornamental trees, plus some annual crops like tomatoes and eggplants. While I've grafted lots of plums and fruit trees in the past, I'm keen to graft a special grape variety. These existing vines aren't overly productive. It produces green grapes, which are delicious to eat, but unfortunately it's prone to downy mildew and has really suffered over our past three mild summers. But the old vines still got a good root system and I don't want that to go to waste. So I've got my hands on a more resilient variety called Isabella. I picked it up from a local gardener and I'm going to graft this scion wood onto our existing vines and they're going to produce beautiful red fruit. There are different layers within the stem and they each have different functions. On the outside is the protective bark layer and on the very inside is the wood. But between them is the all important green cambium layer of the stem. This is where all the active growth occurs. There's also the xylem and phloem layers, which are the food and water transport systems, and they'll join up too. And new cells are produced over time to join the wood together. This way, the new scion branch becomes part of the original plant. <laughs> There's lots of different types of grass you can do, even if the roots and the shoots are different sizes. Today, I'm going to be doing the chip graft, but no matter what method you do, the best time to do it is in early spring. Before you start, it's really important to sterilise your tools. I'm using a blend of metho and water. I cut back the vine around one week ago and I've taken off more than 90% of the plant. I could have left more, but if I graft higher in the plant, it means I have to manage two different varieties, which is a bit trickier. Instead, I've taken it way back to a stump, which means I just manage one superior variety. But before you get grafting, there's something you should know. You have to come and do a pre-cut a few days before you actually graft with your pruning saw or your grafting knife below the point you're going to graft at. This releases the sap's pressure and it'll flow down the trunk. You'll see it. If you don't do this, the sap will actually come and push your graft out, destroying it. I start by scraping back the rough bark. Then I make a crescent moon shape at the base, creating a small shelf. I slice off a small section of bark above this. Now it's time to get some sign wood and I cut off any excess stem. Then, using a sharp grafting knife, I slice off a bud and keep it moist until you're ready to use it. I then gently wedge the bud into the shelf, making sure I've lined up the cambium layers on one of the edges. Finally, I secure it by wrapping it up with some grafting tape. And then I repeat the whole process on the other side of the rootstock. This gives me a couple of options of how I want to train it, whether it's up over this archway or along the fence line. But more importantly, it guarantees success because I'm doubling my chances of the graft taking. This is looking pretty good. This warmer weather will help the grafts heal and grow beautifully. And hopefully in a couple of seasons, I'll be feasting on these new grapes.